Hey, thanks so much for joining me in my home studio. It is nice and quiet in here, but the lighting, not so great for video. So I'm gonna sacrifice a little bit of beauty for the sound. <laughs> so this is the door to my little booth here, right there. I come in here and then look how nice and quiet it is. And here is where all the voiceover magic happens. There's one of my microphones and then there's the other microphone. I switch back and forth depending on my mood. And I'm going to put you back at my little iPad stand so that I can have my hands free. First of all, there we go. Beautiful. Close enough. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much for watching my videos and especially for your comments. I love reading your responses. I don't get onto YouTube that often, but when I do, I absolutely read everything. I try to respond as much as I can or like your comments because I enjoy having these conversations that we have. It's so much fun. So today I thought that I would share with you some of my favorite things. It is the holiday season. There's some reminiscing going on. There's some cleaning of my mom's office going on. So she has handed over a bunch of stuff that she's found in the back corners of her office. And luckily for all of us, it's some pretty cool stuff that I wanted to share with you today from the career of Andy McAfee. <laughs> So in no particular order, just because I just threw stuff in here that I thought was cool. Um, I'm going to go with this first just because it's, you know, oddly shaped. This is a, t a uh, golf ball that I got from Nickelodeon. It's called, it, it has a Nicktoons stamp on it. I'm not sure exactly why I got this, but they did used to have a mini golf course in front of the studio. So I assume it went with that. But I have no idea, like, if I got it at a party or what. Um... Still pretty cool. One of my favorite things. So I was in a little movie called Tom and Jerry the Movie. I don't know if you've heard of Tom and Jerry, but back in the day, oh, reminiscing, the studios used to create a lot of merchandise. It was so much fun. I loved getting merchandise as a kid. You know, I would buy everything. But here's a, a couple of little things that I kept that I really love. So here's a bookmark from Tom and Jerry the movie, and that's my little character right there. Her name's Robin, and she's escaping from the bad guys with Tom and Jerry. Cool, right? Little bookmark. And this is a friendship card from Tom and Jerry. Yeah, it's just simply a card, and I guess you would give it to your friend to let them know that you were thinking about them. There's my character again. But I just love all this random merchandise. And then here's an actual book based on the movie. So you can watch it, you could read it, you could listen to the soundtrack, and then it had pictures in it too from the movie. Pretty cool. I like it. I like it a lot. Danger! Ah! <laughs> I really hope that when Hey Arnold the Jungle movie comes out, they have a ton of stuff for me to buy because I like it. I like it a lot. Give me merchandise! All right. Enough of that. <laughs> so, ooh, this is really cool. This is an article that was in Animation Magazine, which is our industry magazine. And it's really cool because it's from 1994. And it's about a show called Gargoyles. I don't know if you've ever seen the show, but I was actually on that show one time. And I had literally like two lines. But it was a Scottish accent. They asked specifically for Scottish accent. I was playing the younger version of a Scottish princess who had already been established in the show. I believe, actually, Kath Susie did her, her adult character voice, if I remember correctly. But anyway, I was super nervous. I'd never done a Scottish accent before. And I went and got this, this audio tape of Scottish accents. I can't remember where I got it from, but I was just listening to it all week, just super nervous. And I showed up to this session to do my two lines and my Scottish accent. And there were a ton of celebrities in that show. And it was a full cast recording. I'm sitting there just sweating, nervous. I had no idea that a reporter from Animation Magazine was there. And by the time I finished it, he had written this article calling me the one-take wonder. And I just thought that was pretty awesome because I'd been so nervous and I only had to do the lines one time. They were that good. So very proud of that article. And I kept a copy of it just to remind myself when I'm feeling a little sad. <laughs> And I'm I'm not getting the, the character that I really want to get. <laughs> I was a one-take wonder <laughs> at some point in my life. So, <laughs> all right. So this is pretty unique. So I got to share this with you. This is a storyboard from Codename Kids Next Door. It was in a couple of episodes. But I have no idea why I have the storyboards. But I do. And I think it's pretty cool. Look how thick they are. It's just a little book of art, right? So I love this. One of my favorite things. 
Uh, and then I have a couple of scripts. I'm just going to show you a couple of them. But one is from Charlotte's Web 2. Yes, there was a sequel, and I was in it. I played a little spider. So I like this script. One of my favorite things. And here's one of my Land Before Time scripts. I'm Sarah, the Triceratops, in this one. And what else? Ooh, you're going to like this. It is my one and only script that I have from Hey Arnold. And it is Phoebe Breaks a Leg. Still have this, and it's the only one I have. Oh, Phoebe and Helga are so cute, aren't they? Their friendship is special. So I love this script. I'm glad I kept it. I wish I'd kept more, but hey, it's the way the cookie crumbles. All right. Oh, this is pretty cool. So when you're a kid, you have to get a work permit in order to legally work because there are things called child labor child labor laws. And the state of California just sends you this like official permit. And um, on the back, all of your set teachers sign that you were in school and the hours that you worked and, and they sign their name on it. So I'm not going to show you the front of it because it has my personal information. But uh, it's this size. It's a tiny little thing. You got it every six months. This is for six months uh, in 1993. And here's some of the project I was working on and that the teacher signed on the back. Pretty cool, huh? I have a ton of these, but that was just the first one on the pile. So that's what you got. Um, so, oh, some more of my favorite things are invitations to Nickelodeon parties. <laughs> they used to have parties for everything when I was originally recording Hey Arnold. It was so much fun because all of us played together in the studio, right? So we're like a little family. But then we got to go to these parties and play outside the studio. Oh, I wish they would do this again, have all these parties. Maybe they do and I'm just not invited. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I kept a couple of the invitations. So here's one for holiday party. Yay. Oh, there's and then here's one for their one-year anniversary. Oh, you know what? I bet you that's where I got the golf ball from. <laughs> here's their one-year anniversary. Hey, Arnold. He was still there at their one-year anniversary. At least at Nickelodeon Studios, the animation studios in Burbank. And here's an invite to a premiere for Tom and Jerry in the movie. Yay. Um, this is a wrap party invite for Home Improvement. I don't know if you guys ever saw that show or watched it, but... I was on it a couple seasons. I was the girlfriend of one of the boys on it. Um, oh, here's another. It's a Nicktoons holiday party. Yay. Cool. Oh, there's Arnold and Gerald. Right there. Cool, huh? And, oh, this is one of my favorite things. I was the announcer for a show called The Soup on E. Got to do sort of my real voice, but a really hyper version of my voice. And um, I was on it for almost nine years. And this is a picture of myself and the producer who originally hired me for all those years. And this is the rap party for the suit because it did rap at the end of last year. But I love this picture. I just think it's so cute. And we look so good. <laughs> so this is one of my favorite things. And, oh, this is pretty unique. I was called in by Disney to record a song that was based off of Gummy Bears. I don't know if you remember that show, but it was part of the Disney Afternoon, and uh, I was obsessed with the Disney Afternoon. I watched all of these shows. I love them all. I know all the theme songs from them. But there was a Disney Afternoon album with all of the theme songs and some of the various music from the shows, and they wrote this special song for Gummy Bears, and it was called Gummy Berry Juice, and I got to sing it. And my name and all the lyrics are here, right here. There's my name um, right here on this sheet. And I kept it. So that's pretty cool. One of my favorite things. And um, this is a cell that Craig gave me on my birthday. I don't know which one because I'm not going to do the math. <laughs> and you're not either. <laughs> but uh, he drew me two of these on my birthday for two years in a row. And this is one of them, a Phoebe, so cute. And the funny thing is, is I didn't even remember that he had done this until my mom just literally gave me these cells like maybe six months ago. And when she gave them to me, I was like, oh yeah, I remember these. But I had no idea he did this because she's been hoarding them all these years. Bad mom. But hey, she kept them safe, I guess, because they probably never saw the light of day. <laughs> but I love those. Some of my favorite things. And then I have one more thing that I want to show you that's pretty cool. It was a picture, a copy of a picture 
that was actually a billboard in Times Square, New York, for the E.T. ride when it opened at Universal Studios, Florida. And this is me and a couple of other kids and E.T. There's a cool story behind this picture. Steven Spielberg was supposed to be in this. And I don't know what happened, but he wandered off. We we um, took this picture at Amblin Entertainment when it was at Universal Studios Hollywood back in the day. And I showed up, and I'm walking in to Amblin with my mom, and this guy comes walking out, and I literally bumped into him and, you know, said a couple things to him because he was an adult, and I was taught to respect adults and to be friendly, especially at work. So I chatted with him for a little bit, and then we walked inside, and I had no idea who he was. And the producers who were in charge of this whole project were looking for Steven Spielberg. He was supposed to be at his offices at Amblin, and they could not find him anywhere. And my mom knew who he was, so my mom told them that he had literally just walked out the door. We had passed him on the way in, and they were freaking out because he was supposed to be in this ad. <laughs> but he, I don't know what happened. He just wandered off. So, Mr. Spielberg, do you remember what happened? Where'd you go? You missed out on a great opportunity. I was petrified of E.T. in the movie. So when I showed up to Amblin and got to be in a picture and watch the puppeteers move his limbs and light up the finger, it finally cured my fear of E.T. So those are some of my favorite things. If you have anything that you've collected or kept, let me know. Let's, uh, let's discuss and play and have a good time and reminisce. And if you're wondering if I have anything else, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I have so many boxes to go through. I kind of wish I'd kept more. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, comment if you want or like and subscribe, I guess. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> thank you, and I'll try to record another YouTube video soon.